So uh, basically, like our group was musically challenged, but uh, all the uh, modules we decided to implement were actually sound related, because uh, we can still hear. Uh, and so uh, we ended up uh, building up uh, pretty much all the concept related. So we, did, yeah. we did the required chords and then harmonic and self dynamics. Great. Uh, in terms of visuals, uh, we were planning to do a uh, note display. Uh, so we got everything to run in simulation, and we can never really debug it correctly uh, once we synthesize it. And we, didn't, we didn't really have any errors, and this is just a screen was black uh, when we were trying to display the notes. So we said, well, it's really worth just two points at this point. We want to focus on like sort of our, our core. Uh, sort of the project. Um, so beyond that, I think we should talk a little bit about, um, you, yeah, the way we approached, uh, you know, sort of a, we had a lecture on handoff uh, and signals like ready and, and new signals and so forth, and we really used that approach sort of uh, extensively on every single thing we did, especially in sort of the note player, the song reader, where we had Inside of a single note player module, we had six or seven different other modules being instantiated, and every time we had a new signal and so being uh, passed to the next one, and it tripled the They form a chain whereby you have all these sub modules that modify the sound signal in each way, but they depend on the previous like, module's output. So the chain was like from the codec, you generate signal, and then that will go into the harmonics module, which generates three different harmonics. For the base, we can see three different harmonics, and then all these feed into a module that combines them together. Uh, and after that, the next module is a dynamics module that applies an envelope to it. Uh, we did an ADSR envelope, which I'll talk about afterwards. And up from that, we need to scale it by the amplitude the node is supposed to be at the module, and then find it out. So there's this long chain of stuff. But by using the generate and release signals to indicate when the next module should start processing, we found that it really helped to work out, like avoid any timing issues as opposed to saying like, oh, my module is going to take 10 cycles and you should wait 10 cycles and you can just start going. And like, because I worked on the dynamics part and Sai worked on the harmonics and all the stuff before that. And we just dropped our stuff into the note player and it just worked and it was great. It, it was really, really nice. And it's arguably a sort of semi-complicated overall scheme, but to write it was very simple because we didn't have to worry about all the timing issues. And things like that. Uh, you didn't worry about combinational paths that were really long. You just waited enough cycles and then sampled. Uh, you know, no, we, no, we took a more conservative approach. So every time we use a multiplier, I had a, I had a library that helps to scale samples. So you take in a sample and, and you have a scaling coefficient and you can put the scale in. It, it always takes three cycles because okay. I have like you a pipeline before and after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's like it, was, it might not always be needed, but I mean, yeah. have plenty of cross cycles in the sound generation. And then for the ADSR, that part was actually kind of fun because we, I wanted the envelope to vary depending on the time. And to make a very nice ADSR profile, I wanted to generate on the fly because to store in the lookup table would be like a lot of entries. Um, either that or I would have to do like linear collision between or something like that. But basically what I did is I used a, a low pass filter equation to get uh, exponential like, increase and decrease. And it basically works by you set a target, like a uh, scale number you want to hit, and you will have your current one. And each time you add on a fraction of the difference between your target and the current. But it turns out that to do this effectively, you need a lot of resolution in your scale. Because if you do that for every uh, sample, the samples are being generated at 48,000 times a second. So I have a 1.23 sine fixed point number to represent the scale. And the coefficient for the, the different parts of the ADSR profile are uh, 0.17 fixed point number. And that just fits nicely into the 25 by 18 multiplier on the ESP for you. Um, so we didn't have any problems with like, applying that. Well, you didn't lose your delta because it got <coughs> smaller than one. Yeah. yeah, so um, it's almost about the same as 50 point accuracy. I have a, so the only tricky part about that, the ADSR profile is that it's really hard to know when you need to start releasing the last part so that you hit zero at the right moment because there's a formula to do it but you need like an algorithm to calculate that so instead i have a python script that just generates a table lookup for like each duration when you should start releasing so do you want to um, i think beyond that yeah i think we can just get more 
Um, so the first song is a default song, and it's sort of like a um, the effects. Uh, So the song sounds more like electric piano kind of thing. So the ADSR profile, it has a very sharp rise and a pretty like gentle decay and then a drop off that's really sharp because like the piano key gets muted. Mm -hmm. So for our second song, this one sounds more like clarinet for the second half because I use a very gentle rise so like the person is gently blowing into the clarinet, and so the, the profile is more rounded. Which is are like, the harmonics different too, or is it just uh, the attack? Yeah, the harmonics, there are three, so there are three different voices uh -huh. across these two songs. Mm -hmm. The first song is the electric piano voice, which has different harmonics, different dynamics. And then the, the first part with the constant beat is a very sharp rise and decay mm -hmm. for the dynamics. Uh, the harmonics are the same as the, the last part, the clarinet part. But because the dynamics are so different, it ends up sounding very different because it's more punchy. And then the, the last part with the, the clarinet sounding voice, um, same harmonics but the very different dynamics gives the very smooth sound to it. So that's it for the demo. Um, okay. Do you have any questions? Um, let me just see if there's anything I have to report. Um, so who, who did what while I'm flipping through this? Um, I did dynamics and uh, song leader. Uh -huh. And then he did harmonics. And she was helping out with the voices. Right? And like transcribing the song. Mm -hmm. um, for the, uh, the note display, uh, we had Anna do it. And then we had uh, uh, Jim Tommy to try to fix it. Mm -hmm. Unsuccessful. And that, that was working in simulation, but didn't work when you most of the modules were in simulation, so I think it's like one of the higher level modules where you try to interface into the whole project and it's not really Yeah, okay, so it's working in simulation up to a point, but not all the way to the output. Probably, yeah. because it's not showing on the screen, and it's probably not a timing error, I guess, mm -hmm. so probably one of the higher modules. It's not quite there. Yeah, when we started the project, we figured that anything visual would be very hard to debug if it didn't work the simulation mm -hmm. time. So we did like throw all of our effort behind these sort of very flashy things. We focused mostly on things we could actually do. But we, we felt we had control of what's going on. Other questions? Thanks guys. Thanks.